So we're finally talking about our big move. Hi, my name is Carol. I'm a freelance lifestyle journalist who also runs AlmostDiplomatic.com where I share about my life as a millennial diplomat's wife, the good life without breaking the bank, and currently living in Manila. So our big move actually happened back in November. It is now March. But as any diplomat's wife would tell you, things take a while when, you know, when you're moving, arriving in a new place. Yeah, to settle down, and to just start going back to your routine it really does take a while so if you're someone who's about to marry a diplomat your fiance is looking into becoming a diplomat or if you want to become a diplomat yourself this is something that you should know as early as now so when you are part of a diplomatic family you normally have like three or so options as to how you will be bringing your stuff with you so the first one is to just fly to your country of hosting without bringing anything else aside from your luggage and this is what we did when we flew from kl no from manila to kl it's around 35 kilos per person which was the airline standard we did not ship anything either by air or by sea and we basically bought our furniture there and set up like a whole new life when we arrived in malaysia option number two is going for the air freight so for the philippines we had I think 50 kilos per person so that's a hundred kilograms between the two of us that we can put in air cargo so this one will arrive a week or so after you arrive in the country that you were going to so when we flew from KL to Berlin we had our luggage and all that so we had around 35 kilos per person and then a week later no two weeks later our air freight arrived and that's where we had like some pieces of decor some paintings and some books were also in that big box that was around 100 kilos and option number three is shipping all of your stuff which is actually the most popular thing among diplomats where in movers come to your house they pack everything and they put them in containers that will go into the big ships so this way you can also bring your car depending on the rules of your country the first option is definitely the most hassle free but the third option is great when you want to bring home the stuff that you already own so you don't have to keep buying as well so with that said i have some tips for you right here i wrote them down hoping that they will be a lot helpful to you and make your move so so much better and a lot less stressful it's a move it can get messy it can get stressful so just put that in mind but hopefully these will be helpful all right let's go <laughs> so tip number one you have to declutter and organize your stuff at least three months before the move so this is something that my husband and I have implemented even before uh, we left for KL so that was our first move we were already doing this like start purging start getting rid of the things that you don't want to bring with you and the thing is a lot of diplomatic spouses agree with me when it comes to this one because you don't want to bring things to your next posting that you won't be using so you want to make sure that you are making space for things that you actually need whenever i talk to expat and diplomatic spouses they also say the same thing for most of them they this is actually the top tip i have a friend who's a professional organizer and decorator her name is kaho she runs chooseiliving.com which is also a blog about expat life and interiors so she has great taste and i love it so she also says the same thing they have moved from one country to another because of her husband's job as well and it's the same thing you always have to purge it is a cycle like quite a fun but vicious cycle of purging your things it's the same with my friend Manon who's a journalist and who also moves from one country to another so just keep that in mind less is also very subjective what's less for me might be more for other people but what matters is how you feel about it so whatever it is that you are comfortable Number two, organize your stuff per room and then by category. This is extremely important for people who are going with the third option when it comes to bringing your things with you abroad. And that is with the shipment, like with a big container. And normally when you are getting a container, the moving company will be sending their people over to your place to do the packing for you. And while that sounds like really fun and that you think everything is just gonna be easy peasy for you, it is not the case. You still want to organize your things in a way that they will be grouped accordingly and this will make life so much easier for you once your boxes arrive and you start unpacking because 
these movers their mandate is to pack per room so there will be people in your kitchen just packing everything that is in that room people in your master's bedroom people in your living room so that way they will be labeling everything just by room and while that sounds pretty organized at this point it still isn't enough for example, you will have some books in your living room bookshelf, but you will also have some books, let's say, in your master's bedroom. Personally, I would like all my books to be together in the boxes so that when things are labeled, let's say, living room dash books, they will all be in the same spot, especially for when you're unpacking. This makes a huge difference. So this is why a week before the movers arrived, we organized everything that we had into groups of how we want them to be together. Hopefully both stuff that are for disposal or just in case anybody wants extra pillows, then they can take it. Uh, we have winter clothes here and we have more other stuff. These are already grouped into several things i have my bags here and then i have some clothes like summer clothes this one i didn't really need to wear it right away so i could probably move this into another box that will have to go further in the shipment um, because they're going to arrange this in order like so the boxes that contain the stuff that need to be used right away are going to be in the front of the container we have one stroller here he's gonna be riding this when we fly hopefully uh going into the plane our bicycle uh, our books yeah so many so many things already in boxes some of them but but the thing is we're not really packing stuff we're just sorting them and it's a bit haphazard but of course it has something to do with like the time that we have uh and yeah they're gonna be the ones who will organize them into boxes because it has something to do with insurance if you pack your stuff on your own then the insurance will not cover it everybody has their own system so it's best that you are able to dictate to the packers how you want everything to go together trust me unpacking would be much much easier if everything is just in one place or in one category you also don't want to be that person who's running around your apartment while the movers are packing and trying to get something from one room to bring it to the other room so that they will pack it together with like the stuff that goes there. Organize things in a way that fits your system. It's unique for everyone. You cannot just dictate them and think that automatically they will know what you mean for every single thing. So just make sure that everything is organized in advance. Number three, make sure that everything you are taking with you, especially the clothing, the linens, and all that are washed and clean. Just common sense. You don't want bacteria and other stuff festering with your clothes and your linens while they are in transit. I've heard of shipments that had mold, and by the time their furniture arrived in the country of their destination, everything was gone. Like, red scary type of mold which rendered everything unusable so might as well just make sure that your stuff is clean and that you're not bringing anything that might grow and eat up stuff so yeah number four you have to dispose of everything and i mean everything that you don't want to bring even the trash so you have to understand that the mandate of the movers who are coming is to pack everything in sight unless you label something specifically like do not pack so what you should do is everything that should not be packed should go in one corner with a big label that says do not pack in english and in the local language but of course since you're still living in that apartment up until the movers arrive especially with our case that's how it was we were still living in that place there are still going to be things that are let's say left on the kitchen counter because you were eating it etc so just be mindful of all these things and put them in the trash right away so that they won't be packed even the trash you should label it with do not pack I have a funny story. I have one friend who was moving from one country to another and of course since they were still having breakfast on the table uh, before the movers arrived, there were stuff that were left behind and they had to focus on the moving already. By the time that their uh, boxes arrived in their new country, they found, and I kid you not, one slice of toast 
of course it was also wrapped perfectly and it survived and the funnier thing is there was one raw egg that was also packed into the boxes and it survived it did not crack it did not turn into a chicken but the raw egg was able to travel from one country to another so just remember that they will pack absolutely everything inside number five you have to clean out your car and you cannot put anything in there is it nothing so i know a lot of people are hoping that they can stuff their car with some of the things that they want to bring after all it's taking up space in one 20 foot container uh, maybe you're hoping to put in some linens or some teddy bears or anything that's soft no you cannot put anything in the car it has to be empty so yeah clean out your car it's something that you should do especially if they're also picking up the car the same day that they are packing your stuff you won't have time to clean it on the day itself uh -uh. number six if you still have the original packaging of your appliances meaning the boxes and the styrofoam that it came with make sure to ask the movers to use those boxes for your appliances maybe that's something that you should keep in mind if you are buying something then if you know that you're moving just keep it for a while and hope that you could use it to pack your appliances and other like breakables. This is because the original packaging is always the best packaging for your crystals, for your appliances, etc. For example, I have my wine and champagne glasses and we asked them to use these boxes for packing uh, stuff. They didn't even have to stuff it with paper. The glasses, the crystals, they arrived in perfect condition. So just keep those boxes to be used in the future. We also use like for my um, mixer, for my blender, all of these things. We use the original packaging. Even my vacuum cleaner went into its original packaging. They disassembled everything and then just put it in there again because you know you have all of those crevices those slots where you can put all the accessories and all of that and it just makes a whole world of difference number seven you have to pack your luggage first before the movers arrive so that you can pick out a lot of the things that can go into the shipment you cannot do this on the reverse because most likely you will have a lot more stuff than you intended and you will go over the weight allowance so just make sure that you do all the packing of the luggage that will go with you on the plane before the movers arrive so number eight expect delays uh, if you are promised an x number of days until your shipment arrives then if you think that you will survive with let's say 10 pieces of clothing try to double that try to get near double the number of what you think you will need trust me on this for us we we're expecting our shipment to arrive at the latest mid-January and we were only able to get it mid-February. So I hope that gives you an idea. <laughs> Granted, it wasn't any shipping delays caused by the pandemic. Even the customs people here in the Philippines were also working doubly hard in helping us get our shipment released. But it was actually the cargo company and the broker that they were working with uh that made sure everything was delayed for us so that wasn't very nice and speaking of delays number nine make sure that you also factor costs of these delays because they do cost money so just make sure that you have something extra in case you end up having a delayed shipment and number 10 you have to label everything and note things down because of course, the movers will definitely label your boxes and they will give you a master list. However, it won't be as detailed. So what you'll get will be like box number one, tools, box number two, China, box number three, more China for China. So it's always like that. They won't say uh, China blue and white plates or China antique tea set. No, it won't be labeled like that it will be as general as possible so if you want to be able to keep up with what's where then try to just list down as you go along as you are watching them you won't be able to see everyone especially if you have a couple of rooms in your apartment it will be hard to track everyone and everything down so just make sure that you watch out for the important things that you want to know where they are once your shipment arrives so all boxes will be numbered 
and that in itself will be so helpful when it comes to the unpacking. And if you are someone who is moving but you are not going for the big shipment, let's say you're just doing the air freight and you're going to be the one to pack your own things, I have some pack like a pro tips for you that I learned from the movers who came to our apartment. They were so nice, they gladly showed me how to pack a lot of the important things and yeah. Here are some of the tips that I learned from them. So first of all, you have to use painter's paper or craft paper more than bubble wrap. And this is especially true for your breakables, like your plates, glasses, uh, they can be packed in craft paper. And when you put them in the boxes, you better make sure that there are air pockets in between each of the pieces. So a lot of people think that when they are packing boxes, they should put as much stuff in there as possible. That is also not true. You have to leave some space, not for movement, but just for air pockets so that there will be like things that will absorb pressure and when the boxes are being moved. So just keep that in mind. I have to say that all my china arrived safe, especially my antique tea set. Like I was so worried about that. I was watching it like a hawk when it was being packed and I was just so happy seeing that they took extra care and that when it arrived here in Manila, everything was just safe. Another tip is that big boxes should contain lighter things and heavier things can go in smaller boxes. So when professional movers pack these boxes, what they do is that they really test the weight and make sure that each box can be carried by one person. And this is why we have like 116 boxes, not 110. As I was posting on Instagram stories, I actually have 116 boxes together with Alvin. That's not a lot actually for two people because I've heard of single people who moved with much more. Uh, Alvin and I didn't bring a lot of the stuff uh, that we had in Berlin. We did purge so much. So what they did was that when they packed all these boxes, I noticed that they would uh, test the weight to make sure that it's still carryable <laughs> by one person. This makes life easier for the people who will be bringing our stuff from the ship to the container and then outside again and then delivering it to our apartment in our destination. So. Keep that in mind if you are doing the packing yourself. All right, and number three, so clothes with hangers go into special boxes. So if you are doing your own packing, look for uh, this special box that you can find in some hardware and like you know, build stores. Apparently you can get some of these special boxes that are tall and you can add like a metal uh, rail in it so that you can just take all of your clothes from the hangers, uh, with the hangers actually. You can take them from the railings of your cabinets and then just hang them in these boxes and then they will travel upright so that when they arrive in your uh, apartment at your destination, then you can just take them out of the box and hang them quickly into your own cabinet once you arrive there. So this is why tip number three earlier from the moving tips, uh, when I said to make sure that everything is washed and clean, this is why it makes sense because then you can just lift it out of the lift it out of the box and then just hang it when it arrives. I love it. I love this box so much. It was my favorite thing during the move. And my final final tip about this whole moving thing is try not to panic by when you move. Okay, so I know a lot of people are purging definitely because we have to. But then after the purge, some people think like, oh, I have so much space for this and this and this, and they will panic buy and hoard. So what I want you to do is to do your research about the country that you are going to next, or you know, even your home country. Sometimes so many things have already changed. Some things that you thought were not available in your home country are already available now. So try not to hoard things that are already available there. So only buy it there in country that you are in if it's a lot cheaper or if it's actually worth it to do so. So be discerning and do your research beforehand. It will save you a lot of money and a lot of space and also a lot of effort in the unpacking once you arrive. So just do keep that in mind. I said
guys so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. And I hope that you would like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because I have another video coming up wherein I will show you our unpacking adventures. It's quite unglamorous, I have to admit. A lot of people think that diplomatic life is just all fun and glam. There's a lot of work that goes into it, guys. So do watch out for that video. You will see that in this channel soon enough. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all soon. Bye!